Welcome to Feature Friday at Oil Life Today. Today we're here with Spencer Pettit. We're so excited that he's here. He's here to talk about something called the Belief Blueprint, which is not only his wonderful book, but also a theory of living that really changes people's lives. So we're really excited to hear about it, get a little bit of a sneak peek, change your life today. Welcome, Spencer. It's good to be here. Thanks. So we'll just start off by talking about basically the premises of this book. So you've debunked success, basically. You've been able to come up with a blueprint that uh, works for everyone and is able to change your experiences. So that's incredible. How did this come about? So, well, first off, I'm, I'm kind of a curious person. And so uh, one of the things that I always do is I'm always just asking why. I'm always digging into things and trying to figure out why things are the way that they are. And one of the things that I discovered is that I was pretty frustrated with the idea of belief. Uh, people were always saying, you need to believe more, you need to be confident, you need to uh, fake it till you make it. You hear mm -hmm. all these types of things and it just wasn't working for me. I was feeling stuck in my business that I was growing and I went to meet with my mentor and I said, uh, I'm just really stuck, this just isn't working and I feel like I should have it by now because I've got experience in all these other things and, yeah. and I just, you know, it should be fine. And she goes, Spence. You just, you just don't understand how belief is built yet. And I said, well, what do you mean? Uh, of course I don't. <laughs> that, <laughs> and um, she just drew this simple little diagram. It was just this little triangle. And it just talked about the process of going from hope into experiences and then leading into confidence. And it finally clicked. Oh my gosh, belief isn't just something that we can just go grab. It's something that we earn. And I realized that every successful person that I've ever known has actually understood this principle. Whether they knew it or not, they were seeking experiences that were building their belief. And all of a sudden, my mind went to work on it, and this whole machine came into view. And it's very simple, but once people see it, it just, you wake up and you go, oh my gosh, I realize this is why I believe what I do, this is how it works. And it just, yeah, it, it was okay. fun to figure and out. This is while you were building an oil business, is that right? That's correct, yeah. Okay, that's relevant to a lot of our viewers. I know a lot of people watching right now are oil business builders. So how did that change your oil business? Well, so what happened is that, uh, well, number one, it changed me, which is the biggest thing. I finally understood, oh my gosh, Spencer, this is why you tick. This is like, this is why you do what you do. And all of those things started to make sense. And then I started to see through that lens where everybody else was at in their progression. I started to see where the people I was working with uh, were getting stuck and maybe where they lacked experience or things. And so it made me a better leader because I was able to look at my people through the right light and instead of expecting things of them that they weren't capable of yet or that they had never experienced, finally I could, as a leader, go in and invite them into the right things. And it changed so much. And the cool part about this belief blueprint is this doesn't, just doesn't apply to business. This, is, this applies to relationships, it applies to life, it applies to everything that we've ever done. Any time that you're trying to grow and change, you're challenging your current beliefs. And so uh, once I understood this, I was able to really be confident in seeking uh, new knowledge, new information. It wasn't something that was scary anymore. Awesome. Amazing. So um, as we're talking to Spencer, we want everyone to be able to be engaged. So if you have a question for Spencer about something that he's talking about, about his experiences, any kind of question at all, please leave it in the Facebook comments or you can tweet it to us. That's the Twitter handle that you can send it to. If we can get a little zoom in on that. It's at the underscore oil life and you can tweet us any questions. We'll be taking them live as we go throughout this uh, process. So if you've had an experience like this, we want to hear about it. I know I felt this way before, a little bit stuck and needing a little bit of a push or more understanding to know how I can move forward. So without telling us everything, obviously there's so much to learn, but what is the belief blueprint? So the belief blueprint is the process whereby we build belief. And I just wanted people to see it broken down into like a construction blueprint. So like I said, being a curious person, I, was, I wanted to know how this worked. What, what was the step-by-step -step process to build belief because everybody talks about it and I couldn't find any literature out there that was actually breaking it down into the actual process. But the cool thing about this is that it's actually, these are, these are timeless principles. This is stuff that people have known about for centuries, millennia, whatever you want to call it. And 
every successful person, every leader, everybody who's ever lived who has who has um, successfully created something new or changed their viewpoint has been through this process and it's actually very simple. So what it ends up looking like is a very simple machine and it's the way that we leverage what we hope for into confidence and what we don't think about is that our beliefs are actually made up of very small things that we're confident in. So as we get confident in all of these little areas then that aggregate uh, pool of confidences equals belief. And so when we uh, run around talking about, gosh, I wish I had more belief, or I, I uh, don't believe in that, or I do believe in that, or I believe in you, you know, all of those things, that's all based on these little confidences that we've built or destroyed over time <laughs> with this process. Yeah. Wow. And so why do you think that belief is so crucially connected to success or successful people? Uh, well, I mean, the reason that people will try something is because they actually believe that they can based on past experiences or they are very good at getting themselves into a positive place. I find that the people who do best with this model are those who are able to constantly put themselves into a mindset of going to the next thing. So uh, an experience that might be interesting uh, to the audience is uh, when I was first putting this together, I was under the impression this applies to everybody. Everybody needs to know this. Let's go out and, and tell the world and everybody's going to be you know, having this great shift in their minds. Like, oh my gosh, I'm in control of my belief. You know? <laughs> and I was talking with a great friend and uh, she was like, well, tell me more about what you do. And I was explaining it and she goes, why would somebody really want to dig into that? It just doesn't make sense. And I yeah. realized that this person was fairly content with her life. She was in a good, good spot, like she had her financial needs met, uh, she had um, a spouse who was providing, there was a lot of things that were good in her life and she just wasn't really feeling motivated to change a whole lot at that time. And I realized that the belief blueprint applies best to people who are actually looking for growth, uh, change, they're looking for some, the next level, you know? And because um, otherwise you're not gonna be asking those hard questions. Why am I the way that I am? How can I be better? How can I change? You don't ask those questions when you're content. So I guess I'm looking for everybody out there who's discontent and wants to change something. Yeah, yeah or wants to keep growing. I know um, as I was reading the book, one of the things that happened to me is I came upon your section about what and why. Yeah. And I realized that digging into my what and my why helped me see where I wanted to grow and that maybe where I thought I was content, I actually still want to progress. And I know a lot of you out there are um, growing and building right now. So let's talk about that. What's yeah. the what and the why? Well, so this is where most people get tripped up. And this is the funny thing is that in most belief conversations, this is, this is the very beginning of where people start. And this is where everybody gets tripped up. This is why most belief literature was leaving me wanting. <laughs> it was because a lot of people, will, uh, we hear about things like vision boards or we hear about things like, well, let's set some goals. Or you, even, even more common is you'll see somebody stand up in front of a crowd and they'll say, and they'll get really emotional. This is my why, you know, and they get into it and, oh, this is my why. And this is, and, and usually it's a picture of their family or it's a picture of, you know, uh, financial freedom or whatever it is that represents those things. But what people are missing is that the what is actually the end goal. Mm. The, that's what you're after. And the why is still this abstract thing that they can't explain. And they don't realize that's how it's supposed to be. So um, if, you, if you don't mind, I could go to the board. It would be yeah, really helpful to show this. Let's go to the board. So this is, this is the simple part of the machine, the lever, okay? So what happens is, is that we start at the beginning. And there's a, a popular book out there by Simon Sinek called Start With Why. And that actually was a great framework that helped me to understand how to go from uh, the, the order of things, okay? So we're gonna start with why. So we're gonna put our why right here. And even if you know what it is that pushes you, the feeling that motivates you, uh, a lot of people still don't really know what's behind that idea. And so in the second chapter of the book, actually, you're gonna find an exercise called finding your why. Now, a lot of people uh, in the oil business world have already been through this why exercise or they're familiar with it. This has been around for a few years as I've developed the belief blueprint. But what happens is, is that uh, people, uh, once they find that why, 
only then are they really able to line up what that will truly fulfill the unmet needs that your mind and heart are reaching for right here. So what happens is, is people are saying, well, I, I feel like I lack direction. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know uh, how to get where I want to be. And they put all of these little dots out here. And let's say that this is kind of like true north. They've got like this idea and this idea and the vision board is full of all of these dots out here. And so even if they know what their why is or even if they know what their goals are, you need two dots to form a line. This is just a mathematical fact. You can't have direction without two dots. And so a lot of people spin their wheels at the beginning because they just are shooting at all of these different targets and it ends up being like a hamster wheel with no connection to their why. They're just spinning around looking for all of the what's they can. And that is not enough to get you out of bed in the morning. All of those what's, you might think, well, gosh, yes, I'm under a lot of financial pressure. I need to be successful. That's enough to get me out of bed in the morning. Or you might think, I really want to bring my spouse home and have our family be together and work from home together. That might be a, that's a beautiful thing, but that still surprisingly may not be enough to get you out of bed in the morning. What it is, is the thing that is motivating you, that's in your heart, that drives you. Once that's pinned down, then you're, you can align your what's with that. And now you have direction. And this is the part that freaked me out the most. Because I was pretty clear on why I was doing what I was doing. And I was pretty clear how I was going to get there. But for all the perfectionists in the world, I'm just going to write what out here. Okay. This is the part that freaks us out the most. It's the how. And when you line that up in the middle there, for all of the perfectionists, they go, I need to know exactly how this is going to look. And for the sake of the model and, and for the belief blueprint, it's drawn as a straight line. But we all know that success is a, a squiggly line from point A to point B. So this is just a little bit of a taste. People need to understand that to get trajectory, to get a really clear direction, we need to start with a why and we need to have a really clear idea of what it is that we're after, and it needs to be very well aligned with our why, and then the how works itself out. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, that was really enlightening to me when I read it, when I watched you explain it, when I've talked to you about it, but then I worried, well, what happens if I don't know my why? Mm -hmm. So what can people who maybe are trying to find their why have a lot of what's, have a lot of goals, right? Whether it's to build our business or to overcome challenges. How can we find our why using your book? Yeah, so uh, there's an exercise in the book, and it's called Finding Your Why. And my biggest fear in writing this book was that somebody was going to get into the book and get into the section and not be able to walk through it themselves. I was so worried about that because typically I'm facilitating this one on one and when I do it one on one we get results. I, I have been so happy as this book has been released that the feedback I'm getting is that people are coming back and saying the Finding Your Why exercise was bar none the best part of the book and it framed everything else up. But I also want to give a caution out there. Okay, The caution is that a lot of people um, think that going through the Finding Your Why exercise is going to be enough. And so they say, oh, I've been through the Finding Your Why exercise, and it was so great. And then they sit around still. And there's a lot of popular thinking out there that says that knowing what your why is is just the first step. And that's true. When you see how things are lined up, and as you read the book, you'll see. So the purpose of writing this book was not just to help people find their why. It's a small piece in framing up the whole picture. The real purpose of this book is to help people understand that in order to fulfill those deep, unmet needs, that are making up their why, that they have to set goals and create what's in their universe that are going to motivate them and that are going to create action. We will not have any movement without taking action. And so, um, anyway, that's... Yeah. And I, I really, that's probably my favorite thing about the book, is it's so complete. Um, we're able to find a why and also what to do with that why. So if you feel like, oh, I know my why, I know what I'm doing and where I'm going, but I just don't know how to get there or how to put that into action, this belief blueprint really just puts everything together in perspective so that you can take action and uh, take steps. I've felt that that's what it's done for me, at least. Okay, so we're going to take a question from Facebook quickly. Um, is there a most common why? Or is everyone so different? So this is the best thing, is that our 
why is as different as our life experience. And so this is why finding your why is so important because I don't know what happened to you as a child. I don't know what happened to you last week. I don't know what happened to you this morning. There, there could be any number of things. And the beautiful thing about the finding your why exercise is that it is truly a one size fits all process that walks people down through the layers of their mind and gets them to the real core emotional motivator that makes them tick. And yes, I do see themes as I work with people. We've done this exercise probably one-on-one. -on -one. I've done it hundreds of times with people. It's only been around for a few years. Um, but as far as books, and, and um, I've done this to groups of 3,000 before in a room. So people have been through this exercise before. Um, and yes, we see themes. We see themes. But um, you will find that it's incredibly personal. It's actually so personal that some people feel it's sacred ground uh, when we get to that part. It's so sacred, I just, I can't even talk about my why without getting tearful and it's just so, but you know what it is. And that's what matters most is that starting point. Um, we actually have a special announcement. In the book, it does give the most wonderful why exercise. And like Spencer was saying, it's very effective and you can walk through it yourself. But because we're so excited about this, we're giving away a one-on-one -on -one Finding Your Why session with Spencer. So um, as you, we're going to post the details of the giveaway later. And as you comment on the post that we publish, it's going to be a giveaway session over Skype or in person, whatever we're able to do, depending on where Spencer is. And you'll be able to find your why with him. So look out for that. We're going to take another question here really quickly. What first house step do you suggest? So again, this is going to be different based on every goal, right? Uh, if, my, if my goal is to build an oil business, then my first house step is going to be taking action to build that business. It's going to be doing activities that will actually grow that business. Um, sometimes, depending on where your why is at, let's say that your why is that you just need to feel important. That's, a, that's actually a very common one that comes up a lot for different reasons. I just need to feel value. I need to feel important. I need. Uh, I know what it feels like to not feel valued, or I know what it feels like to feel so small that I can't do anything. And so, uh, the reason that I'm building an oil business is because I love standing in front of people, and I love the feeling of importance that comes from it. You see how that's kind of a specific, a really specific why. So, an example of a how step there would be schedule an event where you can get up in front of people. It's going to terrify you. It's going to scare you. But like I said, the how will work itself out as you seek experiences that will grow your confidence in that area. So uh, the other thing is that um, we get tied up in this type of a question. This is the exact reason that why scares people, or sorry, that how scares people um, is, uh, well, now that I've got my why figured out and I know where the what is, now I have to have this perfect game plan of, of the how. And um, that just plagued me. I'm talking like nightmare level <laughs> stuff in the first few months of building my oil business. And you can go uh, to any, uh, you know, you can go to Oil Life and see all of the tear pads that are for sale and all of these different things. These are all here to assist you on your path of how you're going to get to your goals. But the truth is, the real first step is to get that burning hope inside of you that will make it so that you're not going to ever stop. One of the commitments that I make with people on the oil business side when I'm talking to them at the very outset is I say, you've got to commit to this for at least a year. You can't look at this and say three months in, oh, this isn't working, all my contacts have dried up and this just isn't coming together. You're not burning strong enough if you're willing to give up after the first few obstacles come your way. But if your hope is burning strong enough and you're really clear on that why and you're clear of how that's going to be fulfilled with those goals, it's not going to stop you. And it takes time. Success takes time. And everybody's blueprint is going to be different. I explain this in the book, but time is the great equalizer. Like everybody's going to have a learning curve. Everybody's going to spend time on this thing, figuring it out. And everybody's different. I like to say that sitting down and looking at somebody successful and getting bugged about it <laughs> or getting or feeling insecure, it's the equivalent of getting in the car to go to the airport to go on a trip and being bugged that there's people at the airport getting on planes already. It, it's ludicrous, right? That doesn't make any sense. But yet that's how we are when we look at other people's journeys. We look at somebody else who's already successful in the business and we go, oh my gosh, they have a massive team and 
they have all these skills and they're a great presenter and I just can't do it. And what you're not realizing is that they've already paid the price for that. Mm -hmm. They've already, they've already uh, gotten further down the road and you can't expect that of yourself if you're still working on the how. Thank you. Thank you. And the amazing thing about this book is everyone is going to have to take time, right, and go through the process. But this book helps with the understanding to launch you forward. Yep. gives you a head start in understanding these things. So just to wrap up, what would you say is the biggest difference from using this book? What will people gain? What have you seen becomes different in people's lives as they read this information? So I think a lot of people uh, look at exterior things when they start to figure out why things aren't working or why they're feeling stuck. They look around and they blame their team, they blame the product, they blame the compensation plan, they blame the industry. <laughs> and you know, oh my gosh, I knew it. I, I, got into, I got into direct sales, oh my gosh, you know. And a lot of people get uncomfortable about that or, or they start to say, oh my leaders are just lazy or things like that. What this does is it frames it up in such a logical, academic way as a matter of fact, well, I have to insert this. The, the first couple of chapters, I've had people tell me that they have to read them kind of slowly. <laughs> yeah. And I wrote it as simply as we possibly could to explain how things work. And so if you find yourself in the first couple of chapters rereading sentences, don't be weirded out. It's, it's the right amount of information to tell you what you need to know to put this into effect. Um, but what happens is when you see it this way and it's framed up this way, all of a sudden it doesn't scare you anymore. Once you understand how belief works, it's no longer a scary topic and you can actually address it with yourself. And when you're getting stuck, you can ask the right question, which isn't, what is going wrong with the world? Instead, you can say, what can I change? What can I do? What experiences can I seek in order to cause a shift today? And because now that you know that that's how belief works, you realize that that very confidence that you lack is only gained by taking steps toward that confidence. That's the great barrier to entry in business. That's the great barrier to entry of success is that we have to take a couple steps into the darkness before it will light the next couple of steps. And as we do that, especially in systems that work, like building an oil business, you get a couple, you get a couple steps in and you'll see that the, light, that the way lights up a couple more steps ahead. That's the how. We figure this out as we go. That's the terrifying thing is taking steps into the darkness. But once you understand the way the machine works, you don't fear the process anymore. And it allows you to lead yourself, which then allows you to lead others. Thank you. We're seeing huge shifts in people who are using this book. Spencer's received so much feedback about teams that are changing entirely, people that are changing entirely, yeah. understanding better, and able to take these steps forward. So whether you're building an oil business, or starting a new venture, or overcoming a difficult challenge, this book really gives you the tools to understand your belief that then launches into controlling your experiences. And for 24 hours, we're going to put this on sale for $15.95, and it's going to be um, a really great opportunity for you to take advantage of this tool that we have for you. Again, look for the giveaway that we're going to be giving about the Y session, and we can't wait to see how you guys benefit from this book. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them on Facebook for us or for Spencer, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks so much for being with us today. We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys.